All right. Today's presentation. In today's presentation, we'll be hearing from Val Shoup. He is the executive director of the Utah Chiefs of Police Association, and Adam Ellison. He works as the accreditation manager uh, with UCOPA. He also works his day job is with as a management analyst with the American Fort Police Department. Um, and they have been gracious enough to come in and talk to us today about a, a really important subject of law enforcement accreditation, a program that they have sponsored and are, and are working through with the Chiefs of Police Association. And so without further ado, I'm going to turn the time over to them. And I will pass the ball. Maybe. Hey, Doug, you should be able to take the ball now. Yeah, it's, it's working in that direction. <laughs> there we go. All right. All right. That's so great. hopefully everyone can see our slides up here. Uh, my name is Adam Ellison. I work currently at American Fort Police Department, and I've been involved in policy management for several years. In the law enforcement community and I've had the great opportunity to be involved as a despite not being a sworn officer I've had the great opportunity to be involved mostly because of my educational background which is in in law I went to law school at BYU and so um, I got I got uh, asked to be involved in some of our policy last year I got asked to, to manage our accreditation at our agency and so I became involved and familiar with accreditation through that process and I have uh, Val Shoup is here with me too, and he can kind of introduce himself and his background involvement in this as well. Yeah, my name is Val Shoup. Uh, I'm a retired chief of police uh, with South Ogden City. Uh, I have been in law enforcement for over 40 years and uh, was uh, appointed as the executive director for the Utah Chiefs uh, uh, three years ago. Uh, it's been a great, uh, great experience, and uh, especially as we've been able to move forward with this accreditation program. Um, and uh, bringing Adam on, uh, this has been a, a big boost to us, and uh, so we're we're. It's a pleasure of ours to be able to present this to you today and give you an opportunity to see what our accreditation program consists of. Okay, so we'll jump into it. What we want to cover today is just a broad overview of what accreditation is about, and uh, so what it is what Utah Chiefs Accreditation Alliance is specifically, how accreditation can benefit an agency, and how an agency would go about becoming accredited. And obviously, if you have any questions throughout this process, please type them in, because we want to address all your questions and, and uh, cover this as best as we can. So, so first of all, uh, as far as what accreditation is in general, uh, I'm sure many of you are familiar with this process as far as you know, with educational institutions and things like that. But in this case, Utah Chiefs Accreditation Alliance, we produce a set of standards that outline the best policies and best practices for police departments. And then uh, this is all in a nutshell, right? The law enforcement agency then creates a file that shows their compliance through all policies, procedures, uh, training records, any documentation that shows their practice, practices are in line with their policy. And when they're ready for, for an assessment, UCAA will send out an assessor to audit the agency, review the accreditation file, and submit a report uh, to the UCAA to apply for accredited status. So uh, we'll get into a little bit why we have this in process in place and how it benefits us to go down the road. Do you have any thoughts on this? And the only thing there would be that uh, when it is completed, uh, that submitted to me, uh, by the agency and, and by the assessor. And then we submit that to the Utah Chiefs of Police Association Executive Board. They review that and then they make the, uh, the approval of the accreditation. Great, thanks. So specifically, uh, Utah Chiefs Accreditation Alliance, just to give you a brief history, it was actually set up back in 2008. And as it says here in the slide, it was to establish peer reviewed standards that reflect best practices in the, in, in, for police agencies in Utah and to provide a framework for an independent third party person to come into an agency and say, yes, your policies and procedures are you know, up to snuff and you're, you're, you're 
organized as you should be. And the program had some participation early on, but then kind of dwindled a little bit. And Val Shoup, since coming in, has really uh, resurrected the program and breathed some life into it. And uh, we've had a dramatic increase in, in participation in the last two years. And uh, in fact, I'll go to the next slide here. Down the second point down at the bottom there, we currently have seven agencies now accredited and we have 20, 21, now you say with another one, right, Val, we have maybe 21 that are working towards accredited status. Correct. So we're getting quite a bit of participation. When you look at the number of agencies that are in Utah, we're starting to get some, some traction and a lot of participation. And uh, to go up to this first bullet here I, on the slide, I just wanted to point out that we have become part of a larger network. Uh, there are about at least 30 other similar state programs in the country that run their own accreditation. And uh, we are now in touch with all of those, all of those organizations and we all work together to make sure we're all on the same page as far as best practices, most updated industry standards and things like that. Any thoughts there about? No, I think that good. Yeah. Okay. As far as how UCAA operates, just so you know, uh, we update and review our standards on an annual basis. Uh, we attend a, a conference, a national conference every year with other accreditation organizations, law enforcement accreditation organizations, to review those standards, make sure we're addressing the most relevant topics. Uh, we also are conducting uh, annual assessor training. And when I say that, I mean, as you guys probably know, this program operates off of volunteer hours. and. Uh, Command staff from an agency, usually police chief or other uh, command staff members or someone involved in accreditation will volunteer to be an assessor. They'll come to the assessor training, they'll get certified, and then they can go out and assess other agencies. So to maintain, you know, the, the integrity of that process, we make sure to have that training happen every year and they are certified. Let's jump in a little bit to the benefits of accreditation. Why? Why would you uh, take your agency through this process? Why would you invest the time to do it? I can say, so having managed the accreditation for, for our agency at American Fork, I was able to see this from the agency side. And then after being asked by Val to help manage uh, accreditation for Utah Chiefs of Police, I've been able to see it from the other side too. And, and I can tell you from both sides, there are a lot of benefits to a police agency to doing this. First of all, you're gonna have access to current best practices that are updated on a continual basis. And, and now I know a lot of us use Lexipol and may use uh, policy management tools that keep us updated and that's a great thing. Um, but I would say that there's an additional step needed there to make sure our practices are in line with our policies. And there's some other benefits as well, but when you become an accredited agency, you have a structure in place for continually reviewing your department practices and procedures. And I would say, you know, again, having worked in law enforcement for some time, I have a very favorable view of law enforcement in Utah. I think we do a great job as a whole. Um, but occasionally, you know, we may be, maybe things that we can improve in our policies or in our practices. And being forced to look through these standards and say, how does our department measure up gives that structure to be able to see how we can improve. And I can say, you know, when we did ours, you know, we're, we do a great job, I think, in general, but there were a few things that we said, oh, if we could change this, we could do this better. And on to the next point, it provides an opportunity to, to exchange ideas and develop relationships with other agencies. And I've been able to rub shoulders with leadership from other departments that I never would have met otherwise. We can exchange ideas on how we're doing things, you know, how we're writing policy, how we're, how we're managing things. And so it turns into a, a great thing. So any thoughts on that, Cal? The only thing I would say there is, is uh, I want everybody to understand that this is not just policies of a police department. This has to do with what are the ordinances in a city that need to be followed? Uh, what are the state laws that need to be followed? A lot of that through Lexapol and some federal standards. And so we look at all those. It's not just it's not just the policies of the police department and how they may handle discipline or whatever, but it also uh, goes hand in hand with whatever city, city ordinances there are to make sure that they're following those ordinances. And uh, so that's been very helpful. So in addition to those, I guess I'd call them internal benefits, to talk about some external benefits of accreditation, uh, it is a great PR tool. It, you, 
all of you know, in the environment that we're in right now, we have some challenges facing law enforcement. Uh, we're under a lot of scrutiny. Officers are under a lot of scrutiny. Departments are under a lot of scrutiny. This provides an avenue for departments to have a third party verification in place and a transparency that you can say to your community, we have had a third party assessor come in. They've looked at our policies and procedures. They've looked at our files. They've toured the department. They've interviewed our officers. And, uh, and they've come to, to the conclusion that we are employing you know, best, best practices, that we're doing what we should be. And there's a lot of power in that. And uh, being able to you know, have a recognition plaque presented to city council, being able to display that plaque and, and have a sticker on, on the patrol car and say we're an accredited agency, it boosts a lot of confidence you know, from the community. And uh, to add on to that, you've noticed with a lot of carriers, you're gonna be able to get potentially sponsorship and paying some of your accreditation fees. I know uh, in the case of the trust, they've been very generous in reimbursing those agencies that successfully reach accredited status, they'll reimburse the, the accreditation. So uh, there's several benefits there. Val, anything else on that? Any thoughts? No, no, I think that covered it. Okay. I wanna talk about Lexapol for a minute. Many of you are probably familiar with Lexapol. If not, uh, it's a company that offers law enforcement policy management and uh, many police agencies in Utah use it. And Lexapol is currently developing an accreditation tracking system that is built around the UCAA standards specifically. And so what it'll do in your policy manual is it'll tag those policies that deal with accreditation and it allows for a streamlined approach to getting accredited and maintaining that accreditation. So it, it'll be a great tool once it's finished. It's, very, it's in progress right now. It's very close to being done. Anything there? Let's uh, just talk about Kalia for a minute. Uh, there obviously is a big distinction here. We are the Utah Chiefs Accreditation Alliance specific to Utah. CALEA is its own organization, uh, as you may know, that provides law enforcement accreditation. And mostly what I want to say about this is uh, if an agency wants to become CALEA accredited in pursuit of excellence, that's great. You know, that we, we fully support that. Um, UCAA, the Utah Accreditation Alliance, was designed by Utah Chiefs specifically for Utah agencies uh, and in compliance with Utah law. And, and another benefit is that it's now integrated with Lexapol. I would say that UCAA is dedicated to making sure every agency, no matter the size or, or budget or resources, can become accredited. And, and we want to get behind that. Uh, so that's enough about that. So if you have any questions about that or the, if someone wanted to become CLIA and UCAA accredited, there would be no problem with that. We would, we would help make that happen. So. If uh, you are interested in becoming accredited, that's a pretty simple process. You just need to reach out to Val Shoup at, uh, or myself and request an initial agreement form and, and other documentation you need to get started. And essentially all it takes is you entering into that, signing that agreement, uh, a, a fee that is the accreditation fee and then after you have that agreement in place you're given 36 months to complete your accreditation file for review and that's just kind of to keep a timeline going and, and incentivize people to make sure that they're they're getting work done on it anything there Val, you want to add in no, the only thing there would be uh, that we will stay in touch during that 36 months uh, especially after you signed your agreement and we we assign an assessor to you that assessor will be touching base from time to time to make sure that you're on track and you're moving forward as he gets ready. And if you request, they will give you a mock assessment to make sure that you're in line and, and to, to come up with any problem areas that you may have so that when you have your final assessment, you'll be ready to go. That kind of leads into this next slide, which is that, uh, as Val said, you'll as soon as you're signed up, you'll be assigned a, an assessor the lead assessor and they'll walk you through that process. When you have questions with your file, you reach out to your assessor, they'll help you. you know, you're not sure what to include or not to include, they'll help answer those questions. And uh, we want the agency to succeed. We want them to get to their accredited status, you know, as soon as they're able to. And so we're not here to deny people and make it difficult. We're here to open up that process and help people become accredited. Uh, after you obtain accredited status, it will be valid for five years. 
And during that time, we do require an annual submission of a report. It's fairly minimal uh, as far as what it requires. There's also some updates to the accreditation file, which are required. And again, it's fairly minimal. I think there's seven or eight standards that need uh, updates as far as training records and things like that. I would say that the, the bulk of the process, uh, the bulk of the work takes place up front, you know, getting your file together in the first place. Maintaining it is, is going to require minimal amount of effort as long as, as you stay up on it, essentially. Anything else there, yeah? The only thing, and I would add this, and I know Adam's touched on this a little bit, when we do have our assessor training, um, we also go through the standards to make sure that we are up to date on any that have been placed in such as uh, a new state law uh, or there may be some that we decide are not necessary and are not required any longer and we take those out so i think it's important to note that that we are trying to stay up on this each year to make sure that those standards are right to the top of where they need to be both in state and federal law and really that's all that we that we have today we, we'd like to take any questions if there's any questions um, but either way, you know, if after this presentation, anything you, you need to know, reach out to Val or myself. We're happy to answer any questions at all and, and help you get started with accreditation. Or if you're in the middle of it, help answer any questions you have to get become accredited. All right. Thank you very much for the presentation. Folks, if you have, if you have some questions, go ahead and type those into, uh, type those into the Q&A box or the chat box and we'll answer those. Um, I do have a question from Dan. Uh, can we print this slide presentation off? Uh, would you be would you be uh, okay if we sent out these slides? Uh, yep. Okay. We will uh, we will make a PDF of the slides and send those out to everybody who signed up for the for the presentation today. And, uh, once again, we are recording the session and and uh, we'll post that up on our website as as uh, soon as it gets rendered and and ready to go. And then you can share that with others if if people have questions about this. Let's see. We're waiting to see if there's any other questions. Doug's been patient and patiently helping in there. Any anything from your angle, Doug, on on this accreditation program? No, I was just you know the only question I had is what will that process look like for departments who are using Lexipol when they get that tool completed? How will that facilitate their accreditation? The way that it will help is that. So, for example, when I managed accreditation for, for our agency, I went in and, and currently there's a 168 standards, right, for, for our accreditation process. So for each standard, I'd go in, look at the standard, okay, what policy do we have that applies with this? I'd go find the policy, put it in the file. And what, uh, what the Lexipol uh, accreditation function will do is rather than having to go in and find each thing by yourself, Lexipol has already tagged those policies that deal with that specific standard. So you'll go in, click on the standard, here's the policy that goes with it, here's the policy that goes with it, and it's all kind of right there at your fingertips. So it just streamlines the process, helps it uh, quite a bit easier. And then uh, I assume as we update it going forward, you know, that we, they'll, they'll keep that going. Great. Uh, we do have a question from Rob. Uh, does it take a full 36 months to finalize? And could you give an example of kind of the timeline or, or examples could be quicker than that 36 month time frame? How long, how long did That's it take you question. at American Fork? That's a great question. Um, it does not have to take 36 months. Um, it took us an American Fork, uh, was it three to four months that we completed ours, but I would say ours was on an expedited schedule. <laughs> Uh, I had been asked to, to complete that, and we we pulled in some extra help. We did it kind of in an expedited manner, I would say. It depends on your resources. It depends on uh, if you have someone that's willing to, that's able to spend some time and really focus on it. Maybe six months would be a reasonable amount of time, I would say, to, to put that together. I would recommend uh, when you do sign up for accreditation, you, you really do need to assign an accreditation manager, someone at your agency who you designate that is over this process. Maybe the police chief, maybe someone else that dedicate a little more time to it. Um, you don't need a full time position, you know, to be, you know, to dedicated to this, but should be someone who's assigned that specifically. And I think if you have someone like that, I think six months, you know, six months is a fair amount of time. We just give that three year to give people, uh, you know, the amount of time that they may need and acknowledge that there may be setbacks and things like that. 
any thoughts there at all? No, and, and if you if you're interested in also getting further information, if you contact me, I can send you digitally the uh, all the information on the accreditation program, what it entails, and how to move forward with it before you sign your contract uh, with the with the uh, UCOPA so that you know what you're getting into. I would add too that uh, with Lexapol, once they get that program up and running, I would say that will drastically decrease the amount of time investment up front to get that done. <laughs> It'll probably help a lot. And depending on whether you decide to do a hard file versus a, 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 a digital file, which is an option, that may change how long it takes as well. So there's some different factors there. Great. Awesome. All right. Looks like that's all the questions that, that we have today. Um, great presentation, um, important program, something that uh, at, here at the trust, we, we definitely support this program. And, and as they said, we'll reimburse the, it reimburse the cost of that when you, when you achieve your accreditation, if you're a trust member, um, because we think, it's, we think it's an important thing. Um, we think it's something in, in today's climate that, that we need to be doing everything we can to stack the odds in our favor. And, and this is a way that you can show that you're doing the reasonable excuse me, the reasonable and prudent thing. Doug, anything from your end? No, that's great. Thanks, Jason. Okay, thanks so much, folks. We appreciate, appreciate your attendance. We'll uh, make a PDF of these slides and send those out when the, when the recording is available. And you can go to our website, utahtrust.gov um, slash, um, slash webinars and, uh, and be able to watch the recording. Get out there. And have a great day.